Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our Digital Learning in the History Classroom Series. Today we're doing our follow-up session for the Leventhal Map Center. And uh, it's been a great, great series. And for the Leventhal Map Center, we did a lot of uh, fun activities exploring the digitalized maps of, of the library and also some of the other uh, different map skills that allows us to layer and annotate maps. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're really going to slow it down a notch and I'm going to walk you through how you can um, analyze maps via Google Docs, Padlet, and Google Drawings. I did talk to some of you last week and mentioned how Google Drawings will allow you to um, annotate the map right there and many of you hadn't worked with it yet so that's where we're uh, going to start today and going to go ahead and first let's start off with we're going to and in the classroom you can you will have access to the interactive agenda just like usual if you have any trouble finding anything I will be available online so you can contact me at any point in time and with that lets us let us go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and do a screen share so that you can see my see the interactive agenda for today. Okay, and for our interactive agenda today, you'll see that um, we're going to. I also shared on that that guide our. Uh, Map Center website and our teaching website that Michelle put together for us last week. So the first thing activity that we're going to do is we're going to jump over to a Padlet. And when we were look, thinking about analyzing maps, we were really thinking about um, you know different ways that we can use them, where we can find them. But now what we're going to do is think about how we can actually use them with our students. So if you go ahead to the Padlet that is linked there, I already have the tab open, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop over to it, and. What I want you to do is I've given you a URL for a map, and this is a map of New England. Um, think about uh, Bunker Hill, the Battle of Bunker Hill. Um, it has a lot of other action in that map. And what I want you to do first is you're going to go ahead and click on that map link, and it's going to open you up into the Leventhal website. And on the Leventhal Map Center website, you'll see um, this website is a great tool to use with the students and allowing them to to observe and explore maps. Um, I did actually, so this brings you to the map that we're going to discuss today. Now, I did try printing out the printer-friendly version, and you really can't see the great detail on the map. Really, you see that there's little blobs here and there, and something's happening. But the advantage of using the actual website of the Leventhal Map Center is you can zoom in. Now, the zoom in allows you to get to the grain of the map. So all the way down to the gram of the map, you can keep going, and you can see images that you did not even know existed. So this is one of the great elements that of the Map Center website is that it really allows you to analyze the deep thinking behind these maps that were created. So just from a plain view from the on a printed version, the students would not be able to see this to the grain detail. Now, one of the other advantages is by doing this, you not only, so you have your little key on the side that shows you where, I'm trying to not use my right click, there you go, where on the map you're looking, so you can navigate there and it gives you a little bit of an idea, and you can also take a screenshot here. So for the Padlet activity, and this is something you could do with your students, um, take a screenshot of this page. So if I, on my MacBook, I'm going to press Command Shift 4. And you can see that the symbol for screenshot comes up. I'm going to take an image of this because I think it's very interesting that you can see the cannon being dragged along the road. And you can hear the <laughs> screenshot um, audio. Now, after, um, after you take your screenshot, you should remember that those screenshots do live on your desktop. Uh, it took me a while to figure that out. For a long time, I would go searching for it everywhere, and then I could never find it. Um, but what you're going to do after you do that, if you open up your Padlet, okay, and so that was a post that I um, posted before, but just like our other Padlet, you double click, and then you can upload any sort of media. And what I also want you to do is not only upload um, a portion of the map that you found interesting, but really write a couple of sentences. Why did that part of the map grab your attention? 
So this is something easy and simple that students could do. Think about this being an activity that you could do as a warm up to a math lesson. So you can have students all on the web, same website on the Leventhal Map Center, all looking at the same map and really picking out different elements. Then you can have a conversation about you know, which parts grabbed your attention. Who did anyone else have the same part grab their attention? Okay, who had similarities? Where were the differences? Did anyone find an element that no one else found? So really giving them a chance to analyze at that level. Now, our second activity that I'm going to show you how to do is when we're thinking about map analysis. So we know that the Leventhal Map Center, you can zoom down to the grain on this map. Now, when you're thinking about using maps, usually you have your printed map and you have a worksheet that your students are using side by side. Now, but with using our digital version, why not go ahead and use our Google Docs? So then this gives you an opportunity. Have your kids pull out that tab into two separate screens. We've um, practiced how to do that several times with our uh, Google Hangouts. Um, but really, you want to pull out that tab so you have two separate screens. And then students can view the map. And if you want them to be annotating a Google Doc, then they can do that. So I'm going to show you, and that's a little bit later. There we go. Okay. So this is so again I've provided the link here in case you've lost the link for the map. So students could click on the link to this map, open it up in another window, okay, and then be looking for these details. Okay, so is there a compass on the map? Okay, fill out the details if you find it. Date, title, legend, key, scale, cartographer, name of the map maker, the latitude and the longitude. So we'll just take one element together. So I'll give you, uh, let's go ahead and do the date together. So if I'm looking at my tab with the map, okay, and I'm thinking about where they could put a date. Is it going to be, as Michelle taught us, the nice vocabulary of cartouche? We're looking over there. We don't see a date yet. Um, and students could have the opportunity to keep looking around this map and I do know where the date is, so I'm just going to sneak down there for the sake of time. Okay. And if we look all the way down to the bottom of the map, there we go. So you can drag up in the corner. You can also drag right on the screen. And let's see if I can get a, a little closer. You can see right at the bottom. Okay. Printed for, J, for R. Sayer and J. Bennett, September 1775. Okay. Now, though it's right, it's also listed on the 11th website, really challenge your students to see if they can go ahead and dive into the map and see if they can find it. So then what students could do is then open up their analysis and we found the date, mark an X, 1775, and I might also want to say located on bottom of map, so that way I could find it later. Okay. But you could also provide some questions for your students to answer, okay, who do you think could would you have used this map? What questions do you have about this map? Now, in your Google Classroom, each of you have a copy of this assignment. Um, you don't have to complete all portions, but really just take some time to play and, and see what it feels like to do the activity using a Google Doc. Now, along with the Google Doc, you can also do a, a similar analysis using Google Drawings. Okay, so the advantage of using Google Drawings is you can also annotate the drawings. So this is a different map, uh, one of my favorite maps. I, whenever I'm at the Map Center, I always mention it. It's a, a map of the Battle of Lexington and Concord. And so here you can see that I've already done some annotations. So I pulled in a map as a JPEG, and then I've started inserting some circles. These are just basic elements of what, what is found on the map. Now, many of you might think, well, I can just click on the zoom and zoom in. So this map, since there's not a lot of detail, it's a little bit of easier to keep track of what information is there. But on maps that are very busy, like the map that we're looking at today, um, it, it makes it a little bit harder to zoom in. And what you're going to find, and I'll, and I'll show you what that's going to look like. So on this map that we were looking at before, I'm going to zoom in. And it, gets, it does get larger. However, you still can't see all of the crystal clear elements. Okay. But this is where you could have your students toggle back and forth between the map and then your, their Google drawing, and here they could annotate on it. So I could say, oh, let's see, right here, this is where they were transporting the cannons. Okay. And you can see it initially comes in as a fold. You just go ahead to the fill color and click transparent. If you want to change the line color, go to the pencil um, and change it to a color that can pop pop out a little bit more. If you want your line to be a little bit thicker, you can go ahead and do that. Now, so here, you can see that it does allow students to be able to annotate on the map. You can also see on the side, I've 
pointed out some other details. So the Battle of Bunker Hill was actually fought on Breed's Hills, because over here we see the signage that says Bunkers, Bunker Hill. And here we can also see, and if we zoom in, so you can see something's going on, but it's not as crystal clear as you can see on the Leventhal map website. So I'm going to go to the web Leventhal website now and show you the same portion. I'm going to scroll up a little bit. There you go. So on the Leventhal website, you can see that it actually says Charlestown in flames, and you can actually see that the ships were shooting the cannonballs, and that's why Charlestown was in flames. So here, getting down to this grain really allows students to see what this map maker was thinking. And using the Google Drawings allows them to annotate that directly on the map. So here, okay, even though it's zoomed in, and if you still have your zoom, just switch over to the arrow. Even though it's zoomed in, you can scroll over, okay, and see let me pull up my screen a little bit more. Um, you can see the notes that are there. Okay. Now, and if I want to zoom out, I'm just going to press that zoom to fit again. And I've actually shifted my map a little bit, so I'm just going to drag it. Now, this is a little bit different. You would think that you can just drop a drawing into a Google Doc, which you can do. However, it moves around everything. So that's one of the advantages of using a Google drawing is that it really allows you to leave things where it is right on the page and then layer on top. So I'm going to actually open up a blank screen okay, and kind of walk you through the steps of what you would want to do. So the first thing you'd want to do is go ahead and go insert image. Now, just like all of the other Google apps for education, you can just drag and drop. So I have an image, I have that map that I downloaded, and the great thing from the Leventhal website, you can download the maps as JPEGs directly there. So I have a large version and I have a small version. And, okay. So I have a large version and a small version. So go ahead and choose an image to upload. Now if it does give you that, um, that note that it's too large, okay, try downloading a different size. So I'm going to go into my downloads, and let's see if this size works. A oh, we want the right. Oh, I must have moved it. Okay, so I'm going to just pick another map that's a little bit smaller. Okay, so when you're going to select your map. Now here, this is where you can stretch your map. Now remember, one of the great things about Google Classroom is that you can, once you make your student worksheet, so like I made the other two documents for you, and you'll find in your Google Classroom, you can make copies of that same exact document for all of your students. So your students don't have to insert an image by themselves. You could do that for them, and then they just have to focus on annotating the map. Okay, so here you've embedded a map. Now, if for some reason the screen, the space, the grid to space is too small, what you would want to do is go File, Page Setup. Now the standard is 4 by 3, but you can also go to Custom. So you can see this is 10 by uh, 7.5 inches. The document that I shared with you with the other map, I want to say is 17 by 20. So it really allows us to 17 by 20. So it gives you a much bigger workspace. If I wanted to add space for questions at the bottom, you can see that I have that now um, to work with. And students can still see the detail when they zoom in. Okay, so do not worry about that. And uh, one thing to note is since we're changing the size of these Google Drawing pages, you really, this isn't something that you're going to want to print. This is something that you really want your students to be working with digitally. Because when you print it, it'll go onto two pages and it'll be very sloppy. Okay. So here I have my map. Um, you would want to show your students how to insert a shape. So you draw, click on the shape, just like we did before. Say I want to incorporate an arrow this time. And say there's the title of the map. We're just being uh, very simple right now. There's the title of the map, so I could click on that. If I wanted students to label it, okay, I could insert a text box. So you use the T, insert a text box. And then write map title. Now you can see in this view it is very small, but when I click to zoom in, you can see it's a regular size. Okay, so that allows students to annotate directly on the map with different circling, different shapes, drawing different arrows. Now sometimes you might also want to provide your students with some questions. Now what I found with uh, if I'm making an assignment for in Google Classroom to share out to the class, really what I want to do is uh, insert a table. Okay, two rows. 
and you can see it's right here. So I'm going to change to my arrow again. I'm going to drag it down here. Now I might type in the question, what do you notice about this map? Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the shade of the, where I want the students to type. I usually just use like gray one or two. Um, two seems a little bit better because it's slightly darker. But this really gives students an idea of where they should be writing. Right? You don't want them editing the question. You really want them focusing on where they should write. So if this is something that you do consistently, and you might also remember the same kind of um, shading used in your graphic organizers when we had to discuss articles earlier in the series, um, then students could when they get this copy, they know they're typing the shaded space. Okay, So you could do simply do something like this. You can also provide students with directions. I'm going to change uh, to the other map that I already prepared. So if I zoom in, you can see the assignment I created down here. The same assignment that was on the Google Doc, but this time I've told the students to circle the location of information on the map. So this is where they could be using the Leventhal website in collaboration with this Google Drawings. So we know the date was at the bottom of the page, so I'm going to get my shape. Maybe I want to zoom in a little bit more to confirm and see how it gets kind of blurry. This is why it's very important that they do an, use this in collaboration with the what, Leventhal website. But from the website, I know this was the date. So I drew a circle. Then again, I want to make it transparent. Okay, maybe change the color to a purple. And then I could insert a text box that says date 1775. Okay, And just like all your other text boxes, you can drag to change the size of it um, and then move it around. But notice how every time I layer something on top of this map, the map doesn't shift. The map stays there. So really, that's one of the fun characteristics of Google Drawings is you can layer, think about a collage. You can layer all these different elements on top of each other and then have the students play with it. Okay, and the students, and it's not going to, it doesn't disrupt, so you see the table at the bottom does not move. Think about if you did this in a Google document, that table would be all over the place. It'd be five pages down by now, okay? So that's how you're going to annotate, so insert a map, annotate, and then go from there. Now, what your, so those are the two, three different ways. So we practice using the Padlet, where you can have students take screenshots of a map and drop it into the Padlet and write a little explanation. You could also have students use a Google document, such as this, in collaboration with the Leventhal website. Or you could have the students use a Google drawing, which really allows them to manipulate and analyze the map. Um, really hands-on. So those are three different strategies that you can use for annotating and analyzing maps in your classroom. Uh, what your last task for today is going to be is you're actually going to go ahead and you're going to pick one of, the, uh, one of the types. I've actually recommended Google Drawings since you haven't had a lot of time to play with it. But with Google Drawings, really make an activity for the students. Go and find a map that you think your that could would connect to your content, correct, connect to your curriculum, something that you can use right away. And make a Google assignment. I've given all of you a blank Google drawing template. Okay, make an assignment whether you want them to just focus on key features of a map, whether you want them to focus on um, the content of the map. Really think about what you want them to do with it. Create a quick Google Drawings and go ahead and share it with your colleagues. This will allow them to get an understanding of different ways they could think about using maps in their classroom and how you could use it with in yours. Um, so thank you again for your time today. Okay, hopefully we flew through those different elements, but I um, just want to say thank you for your time today, and we hope you go ahead and explore using this technology with your students. We really want them to get to the point where they are being the creators in the classroom. Uh, thank you, and have a good afternoon.